We're very excited to have Oren Reshev present his work. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask them. Uh, take it away. Right. Um, thank you, Andre. Um, thank you for um, having me. Um, I'm actually really excited for this talk. Um, I just realized when I was kind of uh, looking for the seminars that uh, uh, many of the people affiliated in this uh, uh, seminar are uh, uh, cited in this paper. So I'm kind of very excited um, to hear your comments and uh, uh, feedback about this uh, project. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about the effect of entry on uh, incumbent firms and um, platform markets. Uh, and when I talk about, uh, I'll call it platform markets, I'm referring more generally to platforms or two-sided markets. Um, these markets have been spreading to numerous areas of the economy. So, for example, um, the largest firms in the world today, Amazon, Alibaba, Microsoft, Apple, Google, are all platforms. Um, and also, if you think about the largest firms of the future, so here, for example, I look at um, um, the most successful unicorns. So these are private firms with valuation of $1 billion or more. Um, again, uh, 60 to 70 percent of those are platforms as well. So that means that platforms are, are very big and are growing very rapidly, um, meaning that more sellers and more firms are operating um, fully or at the very least partially um, within a platform uh, um, setting. The goal of this paper is to try and understand how is this rapid entry of firms onto the platform is impacting the incumbent firms and how is that different or similar um, to more traditional markets. Now, what I'm going to be arguing uh, in this paper is that the ultimate effect of entry on the incumbents uh, is, is theoretically ambiguous. And, and basically the trade-off um, that I'm, that I'm uh, uh, trying to pose is that similar to traditional markets, entry usually uh, is associated with a direct negative effect. So there is a decrease in market share um, driving down uh, profitability. But on the other hand, because we're in a platform market, because we're in a two-sided market, um, these indirect uh, uh, externalities, indirect network effects, are going to create positive uh, spillovers um, between competitors on the same platform. Now, just to, to set the intuition, um, I want to uh, start with a stylized example. And as you'll see, this is very similar um, to what I'll have um, in the empirical um, setting. So I do think um, it's worth spending a minute or two um, on that. Um, so what we see here is uh, some platform. And this is a geographically um, constrained platform. Uh, I marked here um, three incumbent firms in red. Um, so you should think about it as uh, free drivers operating uh, uh, on Uber or uh, free uh, listings on Airbnb. Or in my setting, um, these are going to be free restaurants um, that use their platform for delivery. Now, um, what I'm going to be interested in understanding is what happens to those red incumbents when we start adding more of these blue competitors onto the platform. So are they going to perform better when the platform looks like this or maybe when it looks like this? or maybe when we start adding even more competitors um, like we have on the graph uh, uh, on the right. Now, in traditional markets, again, all things equal, uh, we would usually think that those red incumbents would prefer to operate in a platform that looks like this um, rather than one that looks like that, just to um, alleviate competition um, and reduce this competitive effect. However, the main argument I'm gonna be making is that in a platform market, not all things are equal. In particular, if you think about it from the consumer's point of view, um, if there are not a lot of firms on the platform, um, it's not gonna be very appealing to consumers. There's not gonna be a, a, a lot of things to find there. Uh, so we're not gonna see a lot of, in my case, virtual traffic um, on the platform. As we start adding more and more businesses, the value of the platform as a whole increases. It attracts more consumers onto the market, and that might potentially benefit all of the firms including those um, red incumbents. So really the trade-off here is between the, the increase in market size and the decrease um, in market share. Now, empirically, it might seem appealing to just compare um, um, platforms that look like this or markets that look like this uh, to markets that look like that. However, of course, um, the main issue is endogeneity. So uh, uh, entry or um, uh, so entry onto the platform is, is strategically determined. Um, and of course, there are other unobservables that we as the researchers don't see. For Here's one example. Um, it could be the case that there are more businesses in this market because there are more consumers and not the other way around. So that's uh, a reverse causality issue, for example. So how do I uh, uh, solve this empirical issue? Well, um, in this research, I use uh, admittedly a pretty cool data set. So I use uh, proprietary data from uh, Yelp and YTP. Uh, YTP is the Yelp transaction platform. 
It is a subset of the Yelp review website. Uh, which allows for transactions between consumers and uh, local services. I'm going to be focusing specifically um, on food order and uh, food delivery. Now, in order to really identify the effect of entry, I'm going to be exploiting uh, quasi-exogenous variation um, generated by YTP's agreement um, with Grubhub Delivery Service. So for those who don't know, um, Grubhub to date is the second largest food delivery platform in the U.S. Um, at the time, I think it was the, the largest one. Um, I'll talk more about exactly what this agreement did and how it uh, uh, changed the platform. Uh, but at a very high level, what it did is to sharply increase the number of restaurants on the platform. So very similar to the example that I just gave. And I'm going to use variation in that shock, in the intensity of that shock, across different geographies in the main specification that's going to be cities in order to conduct a difference and differences analysis. So kind of comparing treated areas to control areas. And then, uh, if I'll have time to talk about it, I'll mention it towards the end. I'll estimate a, a simple structural model, uh, which will allow me to extrapolate to additional market conditions. And in, in particular, I'm going to be asking what happens when the platform becomes very, very large, so much larger um, than what I see um, in my data. Um, so just to formally um, state the research question, uh, so I'm going to be asking, as I said, what is the net effect of entry um, on the incumbent firms operating on the platform? And uh, what I think are the most interesting effects, are actually not just the average effect, but the heterogeneities. Um, so I'll ask, how do these effects depend on firm attributes? Um, how do they depend on platform attributes? And then I'll also talk about how do incumbents respond um, to increased entry um, on the platform? Um, I see there is a, a question. Yeah, so I'm, I'm uh, thinking a little bit about the conference that many of us were at uh, last week where John Vickers gave an overview of this paper on patterns of competitive interaction. And one of the takeaways from that stream of work is that prices can go up with more competition, even in the absence of this um, additional consumers channel that you're describing. So, so the idea is, you know, in a spatial model, let's say, without somebody in the middle we're competing hard because we're also competing for the guys in the middle if somebody <coughs> comes in between us we give up on those customers and that softens the the price competition between us so you you, you can get potentially um uh higher prices in particular with entry even in the absence of the kind of channel that you're describing so i'm, I'm a little bit curious about what your outcome measures are, and, and if this is an effect that's potentially one you could identify. Uh, uh, thanks for this comment. This is actually, actually uh, uh, very interesting. I, I, I uh, thank you for bringing this up. Uh, I will say that, that in this uh, uh, paper, the main outcomes they're going to be looking at are sales and revenue and, and not prices. In fact, one thing that I'll just say from the get-go, and it's actually not in a presentation, is that I don't see a lot of action on the prices margin. And I think that this, this is, might be for several reasons. Uh, one of them being uh, uh, the specific setting. So these are restaurants, they rarely um, change their prices. Um, so uh, it seems that this might be the thing uh, uh, that's moving it. Also, because it's, it's only changed on the platform and, and prices off platform and on platform might be this, uh, are usually the same, that might be the case that it doesn't, they don't shift their, their, their generally profit maximizing price. So you should think about this setting as prices remaining constant, and this is actually what I empirically get. Um, and only what I'll be looking at is, 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 there, is there sales and the revenue. All right. Yes, uh, Thank, thanks, thanks, yep, it's helpful. Do we have a number of questions? David? Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, so a bit more related to the channel that you want to discuss, namely, uh, more customers coming online, um, and specifically to restaurant delivery apps, when they tend to expand very quickly or get flooded, um, I shouldn't say tend, I have one anecdote in mind, which is the city that I live in. Um, mm. And there are two, at least two platforms, and one of them has many fewer restaurants, but the perception of consumers is it's much higher quality. Um, and, you know, it's not just about the number of, of these restaurants. And I don't really think that the ratings within the app um, give a full story there. And obviously that's intertwined with the channel that you want us to think about. I wonder if you have thoughts on that. Yeah, so I will be looking only um, 
so, so, so I agree, again, I agree. I think this is one of the main uh, uh, issues with just kind of comparing uh, platforms that look um, like this to platform that looks like this, right? Because you say, look, there are other things that are different between these two platforms. Uh, I'm going to be looking at a particular platform and looking at, a, at a, an exogenous, quasi-exogenous change within that platform. So you can think about these things kind of being uh, held constant. Um, and in the next slide, actually, when I'll talk about the results, you'll see that your, your, your intuition is exactly correct. And one of the main driving forces is really the quality um, of these uh, uh, firms. I am going to be using ratings as quality uh, in absence of, 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 a, of a better measure, uh, but you will see that there's a lot of action um, based on, on the ratings of the firms, and that's really what's kind of driving uh, most of these effects. Um, Very interesting, thanks. All right. So let me kind of push forward with the research question. So I, I frame all of my research questions in terms of the firms on the platform. Of course, when I have implications to all of those individual firms operating on the platform, uh, that's going to have an aggregate effect um, on the platform as a whole. And I'll talk about that towards the end of the talk. So let me start with a preview of the results. Um, um, so I asked the question, let me uh, answer it, and then I'll spend the rest of the time just talking about how I got uh, from the question to the answer. Um, so how, what is the effect of entry on the performance of incumbents? Um, well, here really the average effect that I find is actually positive. I find an increase in weekly revenue of about four and a half um, percent. And this is really uh, uh, seems to be driven uh, by the fact that uh, once we add more firms to the platform, that increases uh, the consumer base. Um, using the simulation, uh, what I find is actually an inverse U-shaped relation um, between entry and sales, meaning when the platform is relatively small, uh, which is what I see in my data, um, entry is going to benefit the firms on the platform. When the platform becomes large enough, this trend reverses and additional entry is going to be harming uh, the firms um, on the platform. Um, looking at firms' heterogeneity, then I look at uh, uh, heterogeneity by uh, rating on that platform. Um, and what I find is that actually the average effect uh, is masking considerable heterogeneities. In particular, all of the positive effect is coming from these high rated or high quality firms. They get an increase of about um, 15% in weekly revenue. In contrast, low quality firms suffer from a decrease of about 10% in weekly revenue. So what we actually get is this divergence on the pattern, on the platform, sorry, with high quality firms performing much better and low quality firms uh, performing uh, one, much worse. Um, going back to those inverse U shapes, if you, if you look at the bliss points, the points at which um, profits are maximized, um, you find that for high quality firms, uh, these happen in a much higher saturation rate, meaning that high quality firms prefer to operate in much larger markets or alternatively prefer to have more firms um, entering their platforms. And of course, I'll talk about um, the implications of that. Um, finally, uh, look at an incumbent's response to firm entry. Uh, we already said I'm not going to find um, uh, effect on the price margin. That might be uh, uh, just uh, a result of the specific setting that I'm looking at. Uh, I do find uh, uh, suggestive evidence of uh, increasing uh, uh, investment in quality, which I'll talk about, and changes in advertising behavior, which I won't have time um, to talk about today. Um, so before I get uh, to the actual uh, 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 project, let me just super quickly, um, yes, uh, 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 and, 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 Aaron, another channel that you might think about is the nature of the products offered. So, you know, as, as they're, on these platforms doing better? Do they offer more stuff for takeout rather than eat in? Do they change the kinds of um, uh, offerings that, that, that they have to, to try sure. and cater for this business? Or do they try and differentiate more, let, let's say? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. So I tried to get at that through advertising, but you're right. I mean, I, there's probably other, other, other directions they can turn. Thanks for that. Um, all right, so let me just start with super quickly reviewing the literature. Um, so uh, uh, hopefully, I, I think this contributes to the work on network externalities. Um, so I think uh, uh, the first thing that I'll show you is, 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 is pretty, what I hope, is a, a clean estimate of uh, uh, the magnitude of uh, uh, network externalities, at least in this setting. Uh, I hope to contribute to the literature on two-sided markets. I, I won't start kind of summarizing the literature to the people who uh, wrote the literature. Uh, I just want to maybe mention uh, uh, the two papers that I think are most, are most uh, uh, closely related to what I do here. Uh, so the first one is Kawad Al. I think the latest version that I found is a working paper from 2018. Uh, they look at uh, bike sharing apps um, in China, and they have a relatively similar design when they have uh, uh, um, uh, an existing platform, and then they have a staggered 
uh, entry of another platform and they kind of look at the uh, spillovers and the competi competitiveness between them. Their idea is, is, is fundamentally different because it's, it's the, the, the platform is the one supplying the bike, so it's not really two-sided. Uh, and the network effects are only happening between individuals that are moving the bikes around. So their kind of forces are, are, are somewhat different. Uh, what I think is more similar is more recent paper um, in the JPE by Carl et al. Um, they ask what seems to be a different question. They ask um, why in some industries we have that the industry is kind of converging to one big platform. And then in other industries, we have a segregation into different platforms. Um, it seems like a different question, but actually just the flip side of the same thing, because their model, uh, it's a mostly theoretical paper, um, is again thinking about this trade-off between network effect and competitiveness on the platform. Uh, here I provide, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, much cleaner evidence uh, that is consistent with their finding as well, and adding uh, uh, these heterogeneities and more uh, uh, granular um, uh, questions. Uh, more generally, of course, this relates to other markets with positive spillovers to the effect of entry on firms, and of course, um, the importance of rating and reputation mechanisms um, in online markets. So um, with that said, let me actually uh, start talking about what I do. Um, so uh, as I said, I'm gonna be focusing on YTP. Um, it was launched in 2013, and I'm gonna be focusing on the food order and food delivery um, part of um, the platform. Now, importantly for my setting, um, Yelp or YTP is not actually a delivery service. It is, you should think about it as an information aggregator. So think about it like, um, Kayak does for travel services. It, it, it aggregates multiple travel services and that, that allows you to uh, choose a, a flight or a hotel or a rent a car. The same way works here. So Yelp contracts with those delivery services and these are specialized firms like uh, Grubhub, Eat Street, Chow Now, Delivery.com, et cetera. And then these firms are the ones that contract um, with the individual restaurants. So in a way, the network of restaurants that you see on the platform depends on the network of partners that Yelp uh, is affiliated with. Um, so this is what it looks like uh, on the consumer's end. Um, if you look on Yelp uh, and you look on delivery, you're, you're, you're directed to YTP. Um, here you can see uh, the offering of restaurants around Wash U. If you click on a specific restaurant, uh, you can get here the menu and you can finalize the transaction all within the Yelp um, website. Now in the background, what's going on is that this order is actually fulfilled by Grubhub. So it's not fulfilled by Yelp, but it's fulfilled by one of Yelp's, uh, what they call it is partners. Um, and, and the consumers cannot control that, uh, but it's actually gonna be a Grubhub employee that picks up the food and brings it um, to your house. Um, how do I use this uh, platform in order to figure out the effect of entry? What I'm, what I'm going to be using is I'm going to be using Yelp's uh, 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 platform level partnership with Grubhub Delivery Service, which came into effect in February 2018. So basically what happened is they, uh, uh, Grubhub and Yelp signed the agreement. Uh, Grubhub app and website were still operating. You can still order directly for Grubhub. If you had the Grubhub app, nothing changed for you. However, for YTP users, basically overnight, the network of restaurants that they could order from substantially uh, uh, increased because now they could order from all of these um, Grubhub restaurants. And this is what it looks like empirically. So here we have the week, with the week of partnership, this is the eighth week of um, 2018, is normalized to zero. We see here the total number of businesses on YTP. There's a steady growth, of course, over time, but then there is a very sharp discontinuous jump um, in the number of restaurants. Um, on the platform generated by this uh, addition of Grubhub. Now, luckily for me, or, or importantly for my setting, um, food order is, is, is fundamentally uh, uh, geographically constrained. So you cannot order food from uh, San Francisco to New York. And for the most part, you can't even order food from uh, San Francisco um, to Oakland. So basically you can think about uh, a food market as geographically um, constrained. Now, what I find is that there's actually a lot of variation in the intensity of that job um, across different markets. So uh, some areas were affected a lot and some areas were not very affected by that um, partnership. Now, what does that depend on? It depends on the Yelp network before the partnership. So how big were their existing partners? It depends on the Grubhub network and it depends on the overlap um, between the two. Um, what I show you here is the variation um, in intensity. This is the change in share. It's the share of restaurants on the delivery platform out of the total number of restaurants in that city. The reason I use share is that uh, adding 100 restaurants in New York City is different than adding 100 restaurants in Berkeley. So I kind of want to standardize it 
um, by market size. Um, I will say that in the paper, I do robustness tests with different uh, uh, definitions the results uh, hold. Um, what we see here is that the median uh, a city is actually not or only marginally affected by that partnership, uh, but we do see a very long tail of places that got a lot of new businesses um, because of this uh, uh, partnership. Another way to see it is just to look at distribution in the pre-period, distribution in the post-period, and we do see it uh, shifting to the right, but of course, uh, um, not uh, uh, homogeneously. So some places are more affected um, than others. So I'll talk about how I use this for the design, but let me just mention what the data is. So as I said, uh, this proprietary data from both Yelp and YTP. I have data on all food orders from 2017 and 2018. So um, the, the, the shock happens almost in the middle of the data. Um, I can't tell you because of the NDA a lot of details about uh, the data. I will say that it's in the millions of millions of orders and users. Um, I see item level uh, uh, data, including the description and price. I aggregate it for the main results uh, to the business uh, uh, week level. The main outcomes that I'm going to be interested in are weekly number of orders and uh, weekly um, revenue. For descriptive stats, again, I cannot show you too much because of the NDA. I will say that I have about 56,000 businesses in about 4,000 uh, municipalities. So think about cities and towns. One thing that I do want you just to pay attention to is these uh, uh, two lines. So here we have the fraction of businesses on YTP in the period before the partnership. Uh, on average, it's about 5%. And this is uh, uh, pretty consistent with what we know um, about food delivery, especially in the pre-COVID uh, uh, area. Now it's probably uh, uh, somewhat uh, uh, higher. Um, and then uh, the change in share is about 2%. So even after the partnership, uh, we're still 7 to 10% of the market um, are on that platform. We, we don't, I rarely see places with 20% and I never see places with 60%. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I actually need uh, to extrapolate out of sample in order to figure out what happens when we get to these um, sizes. Um, all right, so this is the data. And let me talk for just one slide about the, the, the research design. Um, in the paper, I spend a lot of time talking to it and I spend like 30 pages of appendix talking about it. Uh, today, I'll, I'll just talk about it uh, uh, in one slide and maybe uh, uh, why, why it should be valid in the setting. I'm happy if you have any question uh, uh, to address any concerns you might have. Um, so the unit observation here is in the business week, as I said, uh, why is gonna be the outcome of interest and I, I apply the, the, the inverse uh, hyperbolic sign transformation so all of my results would be interpreted as percentage uh, change. Uh, post is a, is, a, is a dummy variable for whether we are pre-partnership or post-partnership. Um, and then treatment is gonna be uh, uh, the treatment intensity, which is either the continuous change in share, so 1%, 2%, 3%, et cetera, uh, a binary measure where I just compared those that were not affected at all to those that were somewhat affected, and a shop binary where I basically dropped the, the, the areas that were only marginally affected, so if the change was uh, 0 0.0001, I'm just going to drop you um, from the sample. The results are, are, are consistent across specifications. Um, I allow for establishment level uh, fixed effect and for weak state um, fixed effect to absorb uh, uh, time state shocks. Um, standard errors are clustered at the CT level, which is the unit at which uh, treatment is um, assigned. Um, two words about identification. Um, so identifying assumption here is the parallel trend assumption meaning that absent of treatment, treated areas and control areas would have developed or would have trended um, the same uh, way. This is fundamentally untestable, it is an assumption. Um, uh, in the paper, I go through great lengths to kind of try to justify why I think this holds in my setting. Um, uh, the first thing is that really the fact that this happens at the platform level is extremely important. If we had different firms or different cities kind of strategically choosing um, whether to partner up or not, that would have been a, a major issue of selection. Luckily, this doesn't happen. Now, uh, you might still worry that uh, uh, maybe places that were ultimately treated are even ex ante uh, uh, different than places that were not. Again, I cannot prove this is not the case, uh, but what I'll show you, uh, 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 and I'll also show it today, is that at least in the year leading up to the partnership, soon to be treated areas and soon to be control areas seem to be trending the same way. And really, we only start seeing this effect um, following um, the shock. Now, I also check whether there's uh, other things going on at the same time, uh, uh, um, at the same time as the shock. Uh, so I look at other outcomes that should not be related to the platform, but should be related to um, uh, the restaurant industry and Yelp in that market, and it doesn't seem to have any effect. And I do a myriad of robustness tests. I already mentioned some, like how I define market, how I define treatment, 
uh, randomization inference, uh, matching procedures, splitting the sample, allowing for um, city, uh, 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 differential city level time trends, uh, and the results seem uh, robust to all of this. I'm happy uh, to discuss this uh, uh, after I show the main results. Um, so if there are no questions, I'll, I'll go directly to the results. Great, okay, good. So the first thing that I'll show you um, is the effect on the market size. Uh, so this whole premise of this, of this idea is that we have increase in market size, decrease in market share. These graphs are gonna be aggregated to the city level and will include both the new businesses, the one that were added through Grubhub and the old businesses, the one that were already on the platform. Um, so just to explain, all of my graphs would look the same. Um, this is the week with the week of partnership normalized to zero again. And the y-axis should always be uh, interpreted as percentage um, change. So 0.2 meaning 20% and minus 0.2 meaning a decrease um, of 20%. What we see here is the, is the number of unique consumers in treated areas compared to control areas. We see uh, relatively parallel trends in the pre-period and then an increase um, following um, the partnership. The elasticity here is about uh, uh, 0.4. Um, and of course, when we have more sellers and more buyers, uh, we also see an increase in total transaction volume or total weekly revenue um, on that platform. Uh, here, the effect is about uh, 0.56, if I remember correctly, depending on the specification. But of course, remember that the, the pie is getting larger. There's more revenue to share on the platform, but there are a lot more firms on this side than they are on that side, right? That exactly was the idea that we have an entry um, of more firms into the platform. Um, so in order to figure out which one of those effects is stronger, I'm going to be looking uh, from now on only on the incumbent firms. So these are the firms that were already on the platform. These are not the firms that were added through Grubhub. These are the firms that actually deliver with other partners. And I'm going to be looking at a, a firm level outcome. So this is weekly revenue um, per firm. What we see here is, again, uh, relatively parallel trends in the pre-period. And then following the partnership, we see a mild increase of about 4 to 5%, depending on the, on the specification. Um, in weekly revenue. Of course, this is uh, statistically significant uh, once I aggregate it um, to pre um, and post. So it does seem like the increase in market size is dominating that uh, increased competition um, on the platform. Uh, but as I said, what, what, what I really want to get at um, is, is, the, is the firm heterogeneity. Um, and the way that I do it is I define high status firm and low status firm uh, based on the relative star rating, the Yelp star rating, within city on the eve of integration. So just conceptually, um, think about it as I, you know, on the day before the partnership, if you're above median in your city, your, your code is as high. If you're below median, your code is low. And I do, again, other uh, specifications or our definitions uh, as robustness. Um, I will say that I keep it constant across time. So even if ratings uh, change over time, uh, you're still gonna be always coded as either high or low, both in the pre and in the post period. And I'll, I'll explain why I'll do it in a couple of slides. Uh, formally, this amounts to running a diff and diff and diff design. Um, so I have here again the pre-post, and I also have here the triple interaction uh, with firm quality. Here, beta one captures the effect on high quality firms, and beta two captures the effect, uh, sorry, and beta one plus beta two um, captures the effect on uh, low quality firms. But before I show you the table, let me show you the graphs. Um, so these are the exact same graphs as the one I showed you two slides ago, but now I separated it by high rated firms and low rated firms, and what we see here is a divergence pattern. So uh, high quality firms uh, do unambiguously worse uh, following uh, uh, the partnership, an increase of uh, 10 to 15%. Um, percent. And in contrast, low quality firms uh, do substantially worse following the partnership, uh, and their uh, weekly revenue decreases um, by about um, 10%. Uh, of course, uh, you take plus 15 and minus 10, you get uh, this uh, about 5% um, that we had on aggregate. Um, so really the answer to the question is not just what is the effect, but on whom, it depends who the firm is. Um, it looks the same if I do it by sales instead of revenue, a uh, very similar um, uh, pattern. And this is what it looks like in an admittedly um, ugly uh, 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 regression table. Um, these are the effects on uh, high quality firms. Um, I won't go through exactly each specification, but you can see that they're positive and uh, statistically significant. And again, the sum of these two coefficients is the effect on low quality firms, uh, which again is, is generally negative and statistically um, significant. Um, these results are robust to whatever I throw at it. And as I said, I do throw at it um, uh, uh, quite um, a lot. Um, so most of the appendix is dedicated um, to these um, robustness tests. 
Um, but instead of talking about these, I want to talk a little bit. Do we have any questions? Wonderful. Okay. Um, all right. So um, let me talk a little bit about what, 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 what it might be, what else is going on here. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about is the role of uh, cannibalization. Um, and one, uh, uh, one, uh, and one limitation of the data um, is that I only see what happens on the YTP platform. So I don't know what's happening to toll for uh, revenue. And that is a limitation. Uh, one thing you can be thinking about is maybe this increased source of revenue on YTP is basically cannibalizing um, other sources of revenue. So let's say um, I always order from uh, Orange Pizza and I used to just call and order directly. And now instead of using that channel X, I'm switching to channel YTP. So in my data, that's going to look like revenue is increasing, but in fact, firm revenue, real firm revenue, um, is staying exactly the same. Uh, now, again, I don't have a direct way to address it because I don't see uh, uh, revenue off the platform. Um, I will say that you know this is somewhat of an asymmetric argument because uh, for local difference, we see a decrease. Uh, so that would be like some sort of reverse cannibalization. Uh, but nevertheless, I did want to do something uh, to see how, 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 how big of a concern that is. Uh, so the argument that I'm making is if people already know what they want to order and all they're changing is the channel for which they do it, then we expect to see different search patterns. In particular, we expect search, search intensity to decrease. I know what I want, so I will go on YTP, I will click Orange Pizza, I will click on Orange Pizza's uh, uh, um, 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 uh, business, and then I will finalize the, tran the transaction uh, with that business. What I do is I look at several measures of uh, search intensity. So I look at the number of search queries you typed, I look at the number of businesses you clicked on, I looked at how long uh, you spent on the platform, and I look at how generic was the search query. So did you type orange pizza, or did you just type uh, pizza in my area? What I find is that search intensity does not seem to be decreasing, and if anything, it seems to be increasing, which I think is more consistent with my model of people are first choosing the platform and then choosing what to buy on the platform, rather than people are first choosing the product or the service and then choosing which channel um, they want to order it um, from. Um, other things that I look at that I'll just mention here super briefly, one is the importance of uh, uh, differentiation. And I think this uh, uh, came up. Um, so I look at uh, uh, whether you're a pizza place, if another pizza place comes in or if another sushi place comes in, uh, how does that um, uh, affect um, uh, uh, your performance? And I can actually give you uh, reasons why it would go um, either way. Uh, it turns out that on average, uh, it mitigates the negative effect, so the effect is more positive. Um, uh, the results admittedly are not as strong. Um, and then the importance of ordering of search results. So where you are um, in, the, in, the, in the ranking of the search results, as it turns out, I thought that would be a more important mechanism, uh, as it turns out this is uh, not the main mechanism um, that's driving um, the result. Um, one more thing that I want to talk about before I'll, I'll discuss the, the structural model is investment in quality. Um, so what we see here is the, is the correlation between uh, uh, firms' ratings and their uh, orders. This is in the pre-period. And of course, we see um, a, a positive correlation. Uh, higher rated firms uh, 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 sell more. I don't think this is uh, on its face very surprising. Uh, what uh, we see here is that what happens post-treatment here in the dashed lines uh, we see that the relation is becoming steeper, right? And this is consistent um, with what I just showed you. High quality firms are doing better, low quality firms are doing worse. So that means that now uh, a firm have more of an incentive uh, to be high quality. So if we think that firms uh, can at least to some extent um, influence their, 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 their ratings on the platform, that now they have additional incentives um, to do so. Um, and what I test is exactly this. So I look, I, I run the exact same model, but now the outcome being, um, incumbents a uh, subsequent uh, uh, Yelp rating on the platform. And I find that there's a, a positive effect uh, on average about 1% uh, increase in ratings on the platform. Just to get a, a, an order of magnitude, a 1% increase in, in a rating is correlated uh, with a 3% with a, sorry, with a 3 increase um, in weekly revenue. So I do think it is uh, economically um, meaningful. Now, of course, I, I call it suggestive evidence because I don't actually see investment in quality. I just see the rating, which is at best a proxy for quality. Um, I will say that I test for other stories, such as um, rating inflation. Um, maybe uh, 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 different people are selecting into living reviews on the platform. I look at what happens off of this delivery platform, and uh, the data doesn't seem to support any of these alternative explanations. Uh, one thing that I, that I, that at least that I, for now I can't check 
is, is WeberDAI actually investing in quality or maybe you're just needing more uh, fake reviews, right? So this is another way to affect your rating um, that's not directly uh, investment in quality, but it does seem like they're at least investing in the rating, uh, whether ethically or um, unethically. Um, and with that said, let me uh, uh, briefly talk about uh, uh, the structural uh, uh, model. And again, the one goal of this model um, is just to uh, see what happens when the platform becomes larger. So what happens when we get to Amazon levels or, or what happens uh, uh, when we get uh, multiple restaurants um, on that platform? Now, as I said before, the existing data is insufficient. I mostly uh, uh, have a lot of firms up to the 10% uh, 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 of the firms in the market. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna estimate a simple model um, and then simulate uh, firm performance under different levels of um, platform participation. Um, now, just to give the intuition for the model, admittedly, it's a very simple model. Um, so the way that the model works is uh, uh, consumers are gonna have a two-step decision. They first have to decide whether to join the platform. Um, and that's gonna be, I assume this is costly. Um, so you can think about it as a fee they have to join, or in my case, this is gonna be like a hassle cost. So, you know, you have to interact with the platform, spend time, figure out how it works, maybe set up an account for the first time. All of that is costly to the individual. And they have to do it based on uh, partial information. So they have correct beliefs about what's on the platform, but they don't know exactly uh, which businesses uh, and what items they have um, on the platform, but that they actually have to um, engage with the platform, which I think uh, 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 somewhat makes sense. Once they join the platform, uh, I assume search is, is, is frictionless. Um, and I assume that products, or in my case, services, are both vertically and horizontally differentiated. So there is this, this rating component. There are like good restaurants and bad restaurants, but also there's this match value. So they have my favorite uh, pizza topping or uh, they have a vegan option. Um, what uh, these two together create is basically a preference for uh, differentiation. And I know uh, uh, Andre Hagu has a, a paper about that. Um, so here I, I kind of get that from the model. Um, instead of assuming differentiation, what that gives me is that I have I don't have to estimate differentia differentiation preference parameter, but instead I have to estimate uh, the utility function, which is relatively straightforward, and uh, uh, the cost distribution. The cost distribution or the parameters of the cost distribution, it what pins down the relation between the number of restaurants and the size of the plant. So that's kind of what drives people um, into the platform when it's uh, uh, becoming larger. Um, so let me uh, 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 show you the main results. Um, so here, uh, this is uh, uh, what happens to the network effects. Um, so here um, we have the fraction of firms on the platform, 100 being everybody, zero being nobody. You should think about this as the number of consumers um, in the market. What I see in my data is basically this trip. So I only see around 10%. Um, I will say that the model does very well in predicting the data in this area. I have no way to test how it's doing in this area because I don't have good data here. If I had to guess, I will say that it's probably doing pretty well here, so-so here, I guess, and probably not very well at the high end. This is less of an issue for me because I don't think, even in COVID times, we don't get to 90% or 80% of the market. Um, so I think that that's fine, uh, and I do care more about um, this area. Uh, that's the best I can do. Um, what we see here is that the relation is concave. So when the platform is small, adding more businesses uh, uh, substantially increases the number of people on the platform, but these network effects seem to be uh, uh, attenuating as the platform becomes um, larger um, and larger. Um, and what this does is create this, this, this inverse U-shape relation, right? When the platform is small, uh, the, the network effects dominate, uh, the, the increase in competitiveness, uh, and all in all, the effect is positive. When a platform uh, becomes larger, the network effects are, become much weaker, um, and this trend um, um, reverses. If I do the same thing uh, uh, separately for low-quality firms and high-quality firms, I get uh, this pattern. Uh, and of course, high-quality firms always do better, but what I think is more interesting to see here is that the bliss points, these um, maximas, uh, you can see that for low-quality firms are for a lower number of firms compared to high-quality firms. So again, that means that uh, uh, high quality firms uh, uh, should select into higher platforms or would ideally want their platforms uh, uh, to become larger um, compared to um, low quality firms. Um, this is by the way, what it looks like for the full model. Um, I, I can't really explain exactly what's going on here in the time that I have, uh, but we do see here that like for high quality firms, the saturation rate, the, the bliss point is about 40%, 40 something. For the median firm, it's about 10%. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, and we have this kind of monotonic uh, increasing bliss points. Of course, this, uh, this I, I will be, I will admit uh, that these precise numbers change 
uh, when I change the, the specification, but this, this uh, general qualitative results um, are, are, are fairly robust. Um, so let me just sum up everything in the last two minutes, and I think I'm right on time. Um, so in this paper, I asked what is the effect of entry on incumbent firms, um, and I do think that this has implications um, to all of the um, uh, stakeholders in this setting. Uh, so for the businesses operating on the platform, um, then we do see um, that there are maybe different implications than some uh, 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 markets, uh, in particular investment, investing in barriers to entry or choosing to enter uncontested market may not be optimal, um, especially uh, if you're a high quality firms. Uh, for platform and consumers, I showed that in the paper, and I don't think it's it's very surprising that profits of the platform or welfare of the consumers and is, is increasing with the supplier base. Um, what I think is, is interesting here is that there's an additional effect. So adding more businesses doesn't just make your platform bigger, it also on average makes it better because we now have consumers choosing better businesses. We have businesses investing more in quality or in rating in this sense. And we, we also should have a selection of better businesses onto the platform. So all of this would lead to, every, to an increase in the average quality um, on the platform. Um, finally, for policymakers, there's now a talk about uh, you know, breaking up uh, uh, big tech. And of course, this would uh, uh, increase competitiveness between platforms. Uh, this paper maybe addresses the, 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 the downside of that, uh, which is the loss of these uh, positive network effects, the reduced competitiveness on the individual platform. Uh, we don't get this uh, increase in quality, which might benefit everybody. Um, so basically that might have negative effects on all of the stakeholders um, in this setting. So, you know, if there's like one takeaway here is that the effect of entry um, is ambiguous and it depends on the quality of the firms and on a uh, 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 platform um, size. And um, I think I'm right on time. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Oren. So, so I think next, uh, John will give his discussion, and then there there are a few questions in the chat, but maybe we can uh, postpone those until John is done. All right. Thanks. Uh, great. Thanks. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, let me just put on my slides. So um, yeah, so let me just say, I, I, first things first, I, I really like this paper a great deal. And uh, one of the things I like, I like about it specifically is that it's, it's very um, connected to questions that I think actual platforms have to think about all the time, which is what kind of partnership should we be doing? Uh, how much should we invest in trying to acquire more supply? And so I, I think it, it really is kind of getting at the heart of a question that, that these sort of platforms have to think about you know, pretty much all the time. And that, that's kind of already a great starting point for some work. Um, and so now that I've said that I've, I've you know, praised the paper, I can get into things that I think are uh, not criticisms, but just sort of thoughts that, that came up that you know, if, if, if we were kind of looking at another paper, this is what I would like to, to talk about next. You know, I think um, I, you know, I'm not pointing out anything here that I think is, is not already in the paper, um, but I think that you know, we, is there a more micro level of competition where we can analyze and explore. And so I think, you know, just a simple example, it, it's easy for me to appreciate, you know, my pizza place might easily benefit from a new sushi place being available. It brings more people to the, to the platform. It just sort of gets, people are using it more intensively, um, you know, but it's just harder for my pizza place to benefit from a new pizza place being available. Uh, and I, you know, I think the results on, on how better firms benefit, I think the, kind of the idea here is that, you know, if we have two pizza places, now the better pizza place is gonna win out. What I'm, my question is not like really a, a, a theory question is, do we get enough kind of micro shocks like this? You know, so if you look at the distribution of how restaurants changes, do we get enough kind of examples in the data where, you know, a really a, a very direct competitor for your kind of cuisine came on versus not, you know, something that, that we, you know, we think it's really going to be that the, the network effects are going to dominate. So this, this does require getting you in, into the kind of the microstructure. Uh, but I wonder, you know, with, with the kind of amazing data we have here, can we actually look and see, you know, what, what firms tend to co-occur in search results and kind of get this, like, okay, we, this person had this choice set and therefore we're, we're pretty sure that, that we can label these two types of firms as, as close competitors. Um, you know, the, the, you know, I think that the kind of the, the, the story here is that uh, demand for the platform is increasing in, in product variety. And so if we, we went to that finer level of detail, 
uh, could we kind of kind of explicitly characterize the effect of variety on com customer demand? So you know you could imagine in a place that goes from four pizza places to five pizza places, you know it just might not matter that much. Um, but going from you know zero Tibetan to one Tibetan might matter uh, you know much more for the marginal new customer or even the, the intensive margin from existing customers. Um, and I, I think Oren might talk about this in paper. So if I if I'm missing this, uh, my apologies. But you know it would be nice at the the level of the uh, market to kind of show how much of a increase we got in in, in variety. However you you can you know try to characterize that. Um, you know one thing I think is, is is you know specific to to this context, but I think it it shares this context with a, a lot of platform goods is that um, you know we we have this bundles like no one wants to eat pizza every night, no one wants to eat sushi every night, and so there's there's a lot of kind of returns to having uh, a, a lot of different variety, uh, and and I think that that in an, in a nutshell is what kind of causes the cross side externality effects to to really dominate here. But you know presumably this isn't the case with something like you know, uh, ride sharing, where there's not that much differentiation. And really, the benefit is either going to come in, in terms of price or, you know, more probably in something like wait time. Um, and then, you know, even you could go even finer than than just, you know, whether how much ver variety matters is, is and just kind of get down to is this like a within customer or a between customer thing. And so, you know, I think of like the Brynolfsson, Bacos kind of world, like you, you have, um, you know, is it, is it, you're, each time you add a new restaurant, you're picking up the customer that loves that kind of restaurant. Well, probably not. It's probably something more a, a between customer preference for variety, which I think would end up having some implications for for disintermediation. So, you know, if I only like one kind of restaurant, I can sort of just go to them directly. If I if I you know within my myself kind of vary in my taste for different cuisines over time, the, the benefits to using a platform would just naturally be a lot a lot greater. Um, you know, one effect in the, the paper that I thought was interesting, uh, so the, you know, Yelp is, is obviously an advertising platform, and Oren finds that the, the, the on-platform advertising actually goes down, um, and, and which kind of surprised me at, at first. I was kind of thinking, well, you know, you'd think you'd have more customers to, to get at, and you have fiercer competition, and so you want to grab more. Um, he proposes an interesting hypothesis, though, is that, you know, these better firms might uh, and I should say that the, the better firms are the ones that kind of have a decline in their, their advertising, their relative decline. So do, do better firms sort of, are they riding up their marginal cost curve, causing the returns to advertising to, to fall for them? And, you know, this kind of raises a, a natural question, well, why not, you know, raise, raise, raise prices instead? Um, he doesn't find much on prices, but he's got another paper, I think, that might explain this. And there's other things he already talked about today that, that might explain this. But then if it, is, if it is a marginal cost thing, you know, does this affect sort of fade out over time, you know, do we do we see these restaurants kind of invest in in more capital? I mean, I know he has this kind of reputation um, measure of improving quality. Uh, you know, maybe it's hard to get this kind of data, but one idea I had is, could you possibly explore this with transactional data on on the firm component of wait time? So with restaurants, you know, presumably if they kind of get really slammed with a big demand shock, they, they kind of slow down and, and delivery times slow down. Perhaps if you see these firms that get this influx of new demand caused by the platform merger, do we see them actually, you know, have a higher throughput once they've once they've had time to adjust? So kind of this short run, long run um, thing. So I'm probably right at about five minutes. So I, you know, mostly had a lot of lot of questions. But just to summarize, I think this is a really fantastic paper. I think it's it's going to be a really important uh, contribution to the literature. Okay, Andre, should, I, should I, should uh, I yeah, answer or should I uh, wait for questions or how do you want to, how should I do it? Uh, maybe, maybe answer and then we'll collect questions. Uh, while All right, so, so I will talk about, so John, thank you, thank you very much uh, for these comments. Uh, I really appreciate them. Uh, I will uh, uh, answer some of these. Uh, I have a good, I'll answer all of them from some, for some I'll have a bad answer, for some I have a good answer. <laughs> Um, so, uh, in terms of the more micro levels, so uh, there's, there's kind of two things that I do in the paper to try to address it, and again, maybe there's more to do um, in this uh, regard, is first of all, I, I, in one specification, I actually try to break up the market by uh, food category and geography. So, the, the, you know, the, the, the St. Louis pizza market is a different market than the St. Louis uh, sushi market and, the, and then different market and so on. Um, the results are the same. 
uh, if I do it like this, uh, that the network, the, the positive network effects are weaker. And that makes sense because, as you said, people might go and look for pizza and sushi. So there's positive also between treatment and control in this setting. Uh, I will say one thing that I uh, kind of glanced over today is that I, I look at the, 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 the horizontal differentiation as well. So if you're a pizza place, as you said, uh, and a sushi place comes in, and we actually gave the same example, um, then um, it might be it might be better for you because you're compet- you're not competing for the same consumers. But you know, another argument would be, well, the people who are coming in because of the new sushi, sushi place are not pizza lovers. Um, so maybe you're not getting these people. So theoretically, it could be ambiguous. I find again, uh, and maybe it's not in the version of the paper um, that's that that's up. Uh, I find it's actually on average, if you get a different type of firms joining. Uh, the effect is more positive um, on the incumbents. One thing that you mentioned that I don't do is look at how like the increased variety attracts more people. So if I if I add more pizza places versus if I add more uh, sushi places that I didn't have, uh, how does that affect the network effects? I didn't look at that and I think I, I can and I should. Uh, in terms of the importance of variety, so actually you gave the example of Uber uh, and usually when I present, I actually say that you need variety on Uber because you need the driver to be close to you. So variety is not going to be whether, you know, which car they drive, variety is going to be where they are. Uh, if I'm in a city that doesn't have a lot of Uber drivers, I'm going to use Lyft because I want, uh, uh, I don't want to wait that long. Uh, so here the value is going to be not waiting that much. Um, rather than, so the match value is not if the food, if it's food that I like, but it's whoever they're close to me um, uh, um, um, geographically. Um, I didn't look at within consumer, between consumer. I should do that. I will say consumer data. Um, is not great. It's 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 very noisy. Uh, but I can definitely do more to look at that. I do have that data. Um, other measures of uh, of 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 quality. Then again, uh, I, it's on my to do list. I should do it. Uh, it's just you know it's a big project to do. Uh, so I keep procrastinating. But maybe I should I should prioritize that. I think I think one uh, of the downsides were... of knowing everything is or having all the access is that you know you, you kind of unshackle your your referees to ask you for for everything in the, under the sun because they yeah, know yeah, how much you have yeah um and i think i think that's the main the main points you you address but thanks um there, there is a question from eva i don't know if she wants to ask it sure uh, hi, I was wondering whether you can think about what, what's kind of behind these differential effects on low and high quality firms. That Could that be also driven by the fact that the entering firms are somehow low quality? I mean, this seems to be a little bit the case, at least in Europe, in some places that the, 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 the firms that sell only via this um, delivery services are actually only takeaway places which have, for example, bad... Uh, uh, hygiene ratings and so on. So I, I wonder if that could be behind that as well. And that would also explain maybe this investment in quality result, right? Because mm-hmm. then you would see that the firms that were before or already above mean quality, they actually gain in their ratings just because the incoming firms are very low quality. So I don't right. know if you so, can check that somehow as well. Yeah, so, so that's a that, that's a that, that that's a good question. Uh, um, uh, I, I will say uh, a couple of things. Um, so first, first of all, just on average, the restaurants that are entering the platform are, are look very similar to the, pla- the 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 firms that are already on the platform. Um, in terms of uh, rating, I mean, they I think they're like marginally lower. It's like a you know like a point zero, a point something uh, uh, less than average rating, but on average, um, they look kind of uh, uh, the same. One way that I try to control for it, because maybe some markets get more high quality entrance, some places do not, is that I, um, I, when I code wherever you are high and low, I also include the new businesses. So this is where you are in the, in the new or in the future distribution um, of ratings. Uh, so that's kind of a way to try to control for difference between markets. Um, I did, uh, 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 in trying to measure the network effects, and I actually don't think it ended up in the paper, I, because I just, uh, I thought it was uh, pretty straightforward. I, I try to test whether if there are better businesses joining the platform, that does, does that um, draw in uh, uh, more people compared to when there are bad firms joining the platform, conditional the number of firms that joined. Uh, there is, uh, of course, a, a, a weak positive relation there. So, you know, good firms uh, uh, on average. Uh, weekly bring me weekly bring in more uh, consumers. I see. 
Okay, thanks. Thanks. Uh, 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 Aslam, I think you have a question. Yes, thank you. So uh, I was wondering, you know, the maybe Yelp also has some effect on uh, by giving prominence differently to different type of firms after this partnership uh, contract. So maybe it's not about the entry uh, exogenously happening, but it's just the Yelp ranking of those uh, firms are changing after the partnership. And I was I I also can expect Yelp to not to put so much down in the list those high quality ones that are already high ranked. So maybe the ones that are really suffering from this uh, lack of prominence are the incumbents that were not uh, high status or ranked before the partnership. Have you thought about this or is there any way that you could see anything in the data? Yes, um, so, so that's a good question. I, I, I think the, the intuition you described goes in the other way. If you say that they are, it's, they wanna bring up the lower ones. So that no, would make the, the- I was thinking about, you know, if I'm Yelp and I, want to change the prominence, of course, I don't want to put the really high ranked or high quality ones incumbents down in the list, but those ones oh. that are already low quality might be more suffering from this. I see, all right, yeah. All right. So it's, it's, the, it's the ordering of the search. Yes. Um, so I do look at that in the paper. So admittedly, actually, when I, uh, you know, when I got this result, I thought this would be like one of the main things that's going on. Um, it, it turns out it doesn't seem to be really the case. So first of all, um, if you the correlation between the your your star rating and where you are on, on the search result is actually it's it's negative, right? Because high quality business, as you mentioned, are higher on the list um, or or lower in terms of rank. Uh, but it's only minus 0.1. So it's it's a pretty weak correlation. Um, and because there's a lot of other things going on when you search for uh, results, when you search for a, a restaurant. Um, I did what I did try to do is I see your search rating, so I try to control for that and see if that makes uh, uh, if that uh, substantially changes the result, right? So it's all coming from just where you are rated, and the intuition is that when you add more firms, the good ones they stay up, but the the bad ones they're getting pushed down, so you just don't see them. Um, then that would mean that if I uh, if I control for the research results, uh, uh, this should go away. Um, it doesn't seem to be the case. So uh, I agree, this was my intuition as well, uh, but that does not seem to be, uh, uh, at least in my setting, uh, the main thing that's driving um, this result. Does this answer your question? Okay. Yeah, I mean, one thing is thinking about how people are doing the search and, you know, thinking, uh, adding firms, changing, you know, the, the way that they, right. they are ranking the search. The other one is like, I was really thinking about this objective ranking versus subjective ranking, you know, Yelp giving prominence to uh, those firms that are more like having partnership with Grubhub now because of the fact that maybe there's some commission coming additional from this relationship. So let me so let me clarify. So first of all, uh, why I, I worked at Yelp, I never had access to their search algorithm because you know this is like super proprietary. Um, but I will say that, to my knowledge, it, it hasn't changed significantly over time. In particular, it didn't change between treated areas and control areas, right? So everything that I do is is diff and diff. So I always have treatment versus control. So if there are any changes to how they rank businesses, they should be the same in both of these markets. The last thing that I want to say, just it, it's a correction. I think it's important. The businesses that I look at in the main specification are not the Grubhub businesses, right? So the Grubhub business are going to be the entrance. They are not included in the main analysis. I only look at the businesses that were already um, on the platform. Um, so just to kind of, uh, I think this is important. Okay. But yeah, thanks. So, uh, thanks. Um, um, so we're exactly at one hour. So at this point, I will stop the recording.